Welcome everybody to the greatest Node.js tutorials that have ever been made. My name is Bucky Roberts and in this video series I'm going to be teaching you guys everything you need to know about Node.js. Now if you're watching this video series I'm going to assume that you guys have heard of Node.js before but you may not know exactly what it is. You probably just know that it's becoming really popular and that you can use it to make cool stuff for the internet but I don't know maybe you went to your website and you started trying to figure out what it was and you saw this alright uh, scalable applications let's see it's an event driven non blocking alright um, that's confusing let me just go and see if I can see what these examples are oh yeah look at this now everything makes sense to me so again going to the website and certain you know trying to read everything they don't really do a great job of explaining what the heck this thing is for a complete beginner so let me put it in really simple terms node.js is a way that you can make really cool server-side applications and that means that if you want to make um, let's say a website or a chat program or a game or even like a social network any web application that you can use to actually connect people node.js is an awesome choice now if you guys are like alright you know what I already know PHP for example sounds like it can do all of those things so I'll see you later maybe I'll catch you in another tutorial series well here's the thing the reason that node.js is becoming so popular for one reason is because it's awesome for real-time stuff for example if you were to make a chat application and of course you would want to be updated in real time well PHP isn't that great for those kinds of applications it's kind of slow and it uses a lot of memory resources and it has a bunch of drawbacks and again to explain all of the benefits of Node.js I'm gonna to have to show you guys some examples so the first thing we should do is install this bad boy so in this video I'll show you guys how to install it for Windows in the next video I'll show you how to install it for a Mac so again you guys probably figured this out might as well just click this big green install button to get started and this is gonna give you a MSF MSI file which is essentially just a wizard and it's really easy to install actually so wait till that gets done double click it and do you trust it okay I trust it I trust it actually let me minimize out of this alright so right here you pretty much just want to keep all the defaults next let me read through this okay I definitely uh, yeah definitely read all that next it's gonna install it in the default location do not change this please make sure that it's right in your program files next everything looks good next install do we give it permission to yes of course we do dun, 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 dun. All right, apparently it completed. Easy as that. Let's go ahead and finish this. And now what do we do? I mean, how do we know for sure that it actually installed? Well, the first and probably the easiest test that you can do is you can actually go to your command line by if you go to your start menu and then you can either search for or just type CMD and that will pretty much open up the command prompt. So what it did whenever it installed it is is it set up a system path so now we can actually run it by just typing the word node and just to test again I know that I'm not explaining the syntax or anything this is pretty much just to test and make sure that everything is installed properly but if you type console dot log and inside here you just type something like I don't know just type anything you want bacon what this means again is just print some text out to the console or another in other words this terminal so again don't really worry about the syntax just copy this make sure everything is working if it's not then go back and make sure that you kept all the defaults whenever you installed it but if you see the word bacon undefined then you're good to go so of course what we can do is we can type a bunch of node.js in this awesome looking you know command prompt <laughs> but fortunately they have programs that are a little bit you know more aesthetically pleasing than this thing that looks like it was developed in 1940 so first of all I want to mention that I am a big fan of free 
IDEs and pretty much software that you can develop Node.js in. However, for this tutorial series, I'm going to be using a JetBrains IDE to type all my code, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you actually buy this, then it is, let's see, $50. But guys, trust me, you guys want to download this IDE. It is hands down the best platform for developing Node.js applications and I know that everyone has a personal preference you know some people like potatoes some people don't whatever but this is not a competition this is the best and another thing is for students or if you're just teaching it or even using it for an open source project it's completely free so guys splooge on this I know it's 50 bucks like I said but it's well worth it if you gotta steal some money from your grandma or anything then that is fine so download this again if you want to try it free for 30 days do that and actually I don't have this exact IDE installed on my computer I actually have another IDE from this company but they're pretty much the exact same thing um, mine is called IntelliJ but again if you install it you're gonna see that it's pretty much the same thing this IDE is more geared towards Java development but I'm gonna show you guys how to install a plugin and it's pretty much gonna give you the exact same um, functionality as WebStorm so the first thing we want to do whenever we have our IDE installed is create a new project so go here and what we want to choose from here is just a static web application this is just a blank um, web application nothing fancy it's pretty, it's pretty much like the most basic uh, app or project that you can make so I'm gonna click next and from here again just choose wherever you want to save it I am gonna save mine in a node.js file that I already made before this little tutorial and I'm just gonna name my project uh, like Bucky so I want it to be named Bucky I'm gonna save it in a directory Bucky looks good finish do I want to create it yes I do and check this out alright right now we just have a directory called Bucky which is our main directory and this folder right here is pretty much just all the settings for um, JetBrains your IDE like your preferences and stuff we actually never are going to edit anything in here and this is just a file that references these are pretty much just uh, JetBrains files that came with your ID nothing to do with Node.js so don't um, worry about these or ever worry about touching them so we pretty much have a blank project a blank folder with nothing in it so the first thing of course we need to do is create some kind of file well if we right click our main project we can select new JavaScript file and name this file app Dot js so this is going to be our starting point in other words whenever we start making node.js applications our program is going to look to this file first and whatever code is in here it's going to run so it's like our main file simple enough so if I just want to actually we'll just do this so console.log so just like before we can type bacon and if we either right click and run this check out what happens so we pretty much have the exact same thing as the command line however as you can see this um, little environment is a little bit cleaner and gives us a few more tools than that boring uh, black and white command line so there you go that is set up and running perfectly however there are a few things that I want to take care of the first thing is this whenever we start running actual applications we of course want to make these for websites most of the time instead of you know just having the user use a terminal or a command prompt so what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna go up to this little drop down menu in the top right and I'm gonna choose edit configurations and this is pretty much saying how do you want to set up um, your program to run well if you click the browser live edit tab then we can say this after this program launches then open it in and you can choose whatever um, browser you want I of course am using Chrome as my default if you don't have it then 
get it. So again, after this launches, then don't just run everything in the terminal, actually open it up in an actual website. And of course, you can't just open it in Chrome, you need to give it a, a website to open. So I'll put HTTP localhost, which means my computer, port 8888. So again, whenever we're making Node.js applications, we're going to have to say that this um, is the correct port in the correct location, but we'll take care of that whenever I show you guys how to do everything. Just setting everything up now. So just hit apply, OK, and if we run this right now, then it's not going to open in Chrome, and that's because we're not giving it any code to open in Chrome right now because all this says is print some text out to the terminal which is this. So I know it's kind of confusing, but you guys are going to see later on whenever we start making actual Node.js apps that um, and actually makes sense. So one other thing that I want to explain is this. Eventually when you start typing actual Node.js, you're going to get some warnings from your IDE. So in order to get rid of those warnings, we need to tell um, IntelliJ or actually think if you're using WebStorm then everything is going to run fine but if you're using another IDE from JetBrains then this is what you do. You need to go to File, Settings and first of all you need to install the Node.js plugin. So like I said this WebStorm right here if I actually just click it it's already set up for Node.js however if you have I don't know another product like IntelliJ this is mostly as you can see for Java however you can tweak it to um, pretty much use with Node.js so this is how you do that you go to the plugins and type in Node.js now you're gonna see a plugin called Node.js which pretty much means I want to be able to write Node.js code in this piece of software so you install that I of course already have it installed so that's why it says uninstall for me but you will see a thing that says um, install click that and once it's installed this is another thing you need to do actually you could have kept that open but if you go to file settings you can click languages and frameworks expand JavaScript right here and click on libraries now as you can see we now have a few additional libraries that is capable of understanding so we want to just enable node.js and Node.js globals, again the core modules and globals and again you don't really have to worry about exactly what this is right now we're just telling our program that says hey whenever we start typing Node.js code don't get tweaked out and freak out because um, you know you don't understand what it is so those libraries whenever we enable them it just says be aware that we're going to be developing Node.js in here that's it so now we are good to go again in the next tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to set it up on a Mac and also if you guys want to use a free IDE I'm going to show you guys how to download and install Sublime to use with Node.js. So it's going to be cool. I'll see you then.